Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the season of Lent. We start our worship by singing together our first hymn. It's number 121, 121, 40 days and 40 nights. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of the Lord's passion and the resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Holy God, Holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The 
The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 to 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet, day after day, they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you only fast to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall lie like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. 
But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not Store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Or in other words, tell it like it is. I'm never convinced that we in the Church of England really do a penitence. Like Alistair Campbell, Tony Blair's press officer all those years ago, with his statement, we don't do God we feel uncomfortable with outward signs of religiosity. It's embarrassing. It loses votes. We're inclined to look with distaste or complete incomprehension at the Lenten devotions of Christians in other parts of the world. Climbing a steep rocky hill on bloody knees to pray the stations of the cross even beating themselves to share something of what Christ suffered for our sins. We're more than uncomfortable with such outward displays. And with some justification, we might find ourselves quoting Jesus' words in our gospel reading, telling us to pray in secret and to keep our face and our knees washed and clean. But Lent does challenge us, and it challenges us to, to get real, to examine our motives in our lives and in our religious practices. It's all summarised in those words which Darren read to us at the beginning of the service this evening. I invite you, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. I'm sure we all rejoice that for many of us here this evening and those who gather Sunday by Sunday here at Christ Church and at St. George's West End, our parish 
is the best club in Isha. But we do have to ask ourselves whether we are, in fact, real Christians. We could do a lot worse than rereading that Old Testament passage from Isaiah that we've just heard. Isaiah certainly doesn't pull his punches. He lambasts the surface religion of his time. People who attend the temple regularly, who observe all the festivals and rituals, who even want to know more about God and his ways, but who miss the point. People who fast and humble themselves by their own, for their own imagined benefit, but who ignore the suffering all around them. God speaks to us through Isaiah. Is not this the fast that I choose, to loosen the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house. So, let's give up chocolate if we like, but let's not imagine that that in itself puts us right with God. What are we doing to counter injustice in our own time? Who are the oppressed of our day? Who is hungry? How far do we go to protect our own personal space from the invasion of people with whom we feel uncomfortable? There's plenty wrong in our society, in our world. And what Isaiah is telling us today is that it's our problem. If we cut ourselves off in a holy huddle here in church, if we hide ourselves from our own kin, as Isaiah puts it, we're not preserving our righteousness. We're abandoning any hope of achieving it. I must say that I despair that so much passion, energy, time and emotion is taken up these days in church debates about so-called sexual morality as if the most important thing in a holy life is the minutiae of what people get up to in bed. And yes, I am talking about same-sex marriage. No wonder the secular world increasingly sees the faith as irrelevant and the church to have lost all touch with reality. There are some real big issues out there in both senses of the word. And we as Christians need to get involved in the debate and in the solutions. Are we living in a post-truth world? If so, how can we build the truth world? Something is wrong in the distribution of work and reward, in how we care for the vulnerable not least the old and the refugee, and how we fail to cut through rules and regulations to the values underlying right living. Where is our voice? And how are we backing up our concern with action? As Christians, it's essential that we keep our eyes focused as much on what goes on out there as on what goes on in here. How can the church not just be a concerned bystander, but also part of the solution? So we ask ourselves, how do we observe a holy Lent? Well, first, it may indeed be good to give up something. Chocolate, booze, some time-wasting activity. But please, if we do do that, let's do it for a purpose. 
perhaps to fund some charitable giving, or perhaps to create time and resources for something more productive. Dare I say it, perhaps to find more time for personal prayer. And so as well as giving up, we might want to take something on. Here in Christchurch, we've devised what we hope is going to be a, a really stimulating series of discussion evenings aimed at helping us hear Jesus' words through the writings of our four gospel writers, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. They start this coming this coming Tuesday. And if you haven't made up your mind yet, why not give them a try? If you really decide it's not for you, well, Darren and I won't be offended if you drop out and don't come the second week. But if you know that it isn't your thing or Tuesday evenings are difficult, you might like to read a spiritual book. Darren, David and I can help with suggestions. But again, I urge you, to do this for a purpose, not just curiosity, but with a commitment to learn and to be open to personal change. And finally, in making use of this holy time of Lent, we should all undertake a bit of personal discipline and self-evaluation. We all need to try to understand and acknowledge before God the mixed motives that underlie our actions. And that applies to us clergy as much as to anyone else. I trust that all we do is, at least in part, for the glory of God, but don't imagine that we clergy don't revel in some of the positive feedback that we receive as well. The ministry team are all available to help you with this process of self-examination and indeed Darren, David and I are all trained and ready to hear your confession if you feel that would help. But at the end of the day, how you use this season is up to you. The church provides a framework of worship and teaching. But you need to decide how that can best support you on your journey into reality and how that reality translates into action. But the fact that we are all here today, tonight, is a good start. Because in a few moments, we'll come to that time in the service where Darren will mark us each on our foreheads with the sign of the cross and remind us that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. A reminder that our life is a gift, but our time on earth is limited, and it's up to us how we use that limited time. And we can't get much more real than that. Amen.
Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. Let us pray. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity of love, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. Let us pray. 
God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin, and be faithful. I'd administer the ash here from the uh, platform at the top of the aisle and invite the choir if you wish to receive ash first and then everyone else in the building.
the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Risen Lord and Savior, present among us with the wealth of your love, cleanse us from sin and give us the faith to offer our praise and grow in your grace. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and let us offer one another a sign of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Our next hymn is number 127, 127, Lord Jesus, Think on Me. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. 
As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. <laughs> Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We'd administer communion by simultaneous administration as we do on a, on a Sunday morning from the uh, NAIF platform. I'll sanitize my hands and wear a face covering for the distribution.
Let us pray. Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We stand to sing our final hymn, number 128, Jesus, Lover of My Soul. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace.
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. So love and serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.